Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, I've been busy stitching down the um, exterior pieces or the background pieces and I've used a combination of whip stitch and then just straight running stitch and sort of just um, um, roughly stitched it down. I haven't tried to be too straight or overthink any of the lines because I sort of want it to feel very organic. Now I did have a piece of um, muslin here or calico and I just didn't like the fact that it didn't look like the rest of the background. Everything's so coarse. So I found another little piece of um, fabric that I'm going to put here in the bottom. So I thought I'd turn on the camera and we'll stitch that down and then um, start the process of laying out the mushrooms that we've got so far. I haven't done too much more mushroom wise. I've just kept everything in my little tray, all our bits and pieces that we had in the last video. So this is going to be the composition, if you will, of the mushrooms, but I do need to stitch down this last little piece. Um, I mentioned in the first video that I was going to use a linen thread. I haven't, um, it's by Londonberry by the looks of it. I haven't used it before. I actually know, I tell a lie. I did once and I struggled to find a needle that I could thread it into. And then it was just such an effort to use and it sort of went back into my stash and hasn't come out since. So I was determined to have another go at it because I, I love the concept of it. It's a linen thread. So it's a very natural, natural, uh, you know, thread and nearly ropey. And I thought for this piece, um, like look at the knot it makes it's such a dag of a knot but for this piece I thought it was perfect and it was well worth the effort to you know make it work I'm just going to move that over a little bit I think I want to see more of the stripe than I do this pale fabric so I've just moved it along yeah so I end up searching and finding a needle that had plenty of um, strength about it to get through all of these heavy uh, fabrics, plus um, had the ability to thread it. And the first one I pulled out was this one, which is, you know, great to use because you're doing running stitch, but when you get down to that last little bit of thread, you sort of, you can't maneuver as well. So you end up uh, having to find a smaller needle anyway. And then I found this little guy. I don't use him a lot. He's got a big eye but he's also short. So he's perfect for this type of work where you're, um, you know, doing running stitch through heavy fabric. So you need a thick needle and you also need a big eye because you're working with a thread that is a little bit more heavy duty and thicker, if that makes sense. But boy, she is tough to pull through. But for the small amount of work I need to do on stitching this oh, I figured it was you know worth the the effort of pulling it through all these fabrics this piece of fabric that I've used here I believe is from a tablecloth that had some nice embroidery on it and the cloth was so heavy duty and just beautiful so I ended up keeping keeping it and some bigger pieces and smaller pieces and cutting it up as well. <clears throat> You'd be surprised where you find fabrics from um, pillowcases, you know, the ones that come with a quilt set and they're very decorative and you'd never sleep on them because they they put indents in your face, but they look pretty on your bed. And after a while, the pillow becomes annoying because you're constantly pulling it off the bed to go to bed. Well, those pillow slips often end up at the op shops and they're barely used. They can be a huge source of fabrics for you. So if you are op shopping, go to the pillow case section or the linen section of the store and have a bit of a rummage and I think you'll be surprised what you find. Well, I always am, even from beautiful satins and uh, sequined pieces, just gorgeous. So I'm just doing a running stitch around this last little bit. This has given me so many other ideas. We've got the 
Journal of Stitchery Christmas edition coming up for those of you that have been following the Roxy Girls. So I've been thinking a lot about the Christmas and what I'm going to do and you know will it be into a journal or will it be a piece that I can use at Christmas to decorate with. So I've sort of been thinking a lot about it plus my Christmas decorations they're a theme and it's a real Tiffany blue silver and white theme. So I'm like, well, do I do all of my stitcheries in those tones so that I can pull the piece out and decorate a table or a bench with a panel of stitchery? Or do I just do a couple pieces that suit my Christmas and then I get to play with all the other colours that Christmas can be? Be a shame to sort of pigeonhole myself into my theme. But then wouldn't it be nice to pull out all of those pieces from the project? And there's potentially going to be 12 stitcheries because I think we're going to do two a month. So that's 12 items that I could make using the prompts to add to my decorations. So I'm sort of thinking about all the different things I could do with my stitchery from some stockings, um, to hang or placemats, table mats, um, wall hanging, a tree skirt. There's so many, so many ideas floating around in my head at the moment. Or did I just keep it simple and make a book? I did find, I've been looking for um, antique book covers and they're so expensive. And if you buy any in Australia, really expensive especially when you're, you're only really chasing the cover. Um, so I'm always just on the, you know, the, the look around for pieces. And I found a beautiful one that's going to be coming from France. And it's actually just the front cover and the back cover. It's just fallen to bits. I actually think the spine might be included, but it's $10. And then I, I go, oh, that can't be too cheap to get here. So I clicked on the postage side of things. And that was $10. So I was really pleased with that find. And it's a leather antique book. I don't think it's going to be very big. And it's got a cross on the front of it. Um, so it was an old prayer book from the, eight, she said in her description, 1888. So that's a bit special. And for $10, you know, it's hard not to grab it. Mind you, it hasn't been posted yet. So I'm wondering if it's even coming. But anyway, that's beside the point. Well, that, um, that would be perfect for a Christmas journal. So I sort of, like I said, got a few ideas sort of kicking around. Now I've got that upside down, so I want to do it that way. So now let's start thinking about the position of our mushrooms. I'm thinking this guy first. I'm really loving him. So I'm going to pin him down. Yeah, I'll just put one pin in each thing because I sort of want to just get them roughly in a location. I'm just creasing that again because that is, I better check, I better, better, better check. That's roughly the position of, oops, the position of the fold on the book. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. That should flip quite well. Yeah, okay. Happy with that. Got a little bit of a gap there, so that shouldn't bash in, and that will come over and pick it up, and then that piece will sit on top. All right. I did notice that this little guy is peeking behind, so that will be my boundary, so nothing past that point, because I want to put a tie or something there. So, all right, so we've checked our boundaries and everything will work. Let's put the book away. <clears throat> so I'm loving that one. Now, before I pin it, I might, <clears throat> I might put in a little crocheted one. I'll trim back these threads, I think. Um, let me think. I've knotted them off so they shouldn't unravel. Yep, 
trimmed. And this little guy, I'll bend that underneath when I stitch him down, so I will trim that. And this, this end can go back through the center of that crocheting. And then that can be trimmed as well. That should be fine because I have knotted it. Has anyone had a play with the crocheting pattern yet? Or had a, a play with crocheting? Great opportunity to learn a new skill. And these little projects like this are a really good way to start you know, learning something new. So I'd be absolutely tickled if a few of you decided to pick up a crocheting hook. Would be very, very cool. I'm sure there's videos out there on how to crochet a heart. So even if you started at that point and didn't worry about the pattern that I use, but just crocheted a little heart. And if you keep your cotton finish, and keep your hook small, so a three or a, a 3.25. That'd be a, a, you know, a good start in getting you, um, you know, up and going. So I'm happy with that. I do want this big bad boy to be somewhere. Maybe we need to find his home. Maybe he's gonna go there. Let's just, he's away from the crease. Let's just pin him for now. I haven't thought about his stem yet, I'm not too worried about it at this stage. We'll see what thickness sort of happens down here before we get too, too carried away with stems and things because they're sort of a little bit last, last thought. So I can trim that. I might put a crocheted mushroom next. You probably can still hear my voice. I'm still... Suffering a little bit of the COVID residual. Whoops, that's not a stem for him. COVID residual symptoms, but pretty much I was pretty lucky, I think. There was a couple of days there where I was, felt pretty rough. But, you know, to be honest, I've had some flus in the past that have picked up traveling overseas that have really floored me. And I think half of it was I was overseas and I didn't have my regular chemist and... Um, you know, all the, the things you're used to racing to when you do get the flu. That crocheting, I was about to put it down and it was upside down. So I just want to turn it over. So all those threads, I'll have to work to the back of that piece, but that's okay. Yeah, so I didn't have, I got one in particular that was just nasty. And I was actually, um, I think by now you'll know what my day job is. Um, if this video is after the 1st of July, which I think it will be. So you'll all know by now that I own Christmas shops. So as part of my um, job, I have to go to China and create pieces for our business. So my husband and I were off gallivanting around China, enjoying all the, the showrooms and factories and catching up with all our mates over there that are in the industry of textiles and ceramics and Christmas tree manufacturing and even Christmas lights. So over the years, um, we've made some fantastic friends, but I can guarantee every time I go to China, we go for 10 days every year um, to source our products for the coming season. I get the flu, I can guarantee it. And it's been reasonable, but this one year, it was nasty. I was so sick. And like I said, I think it was because um, I think it was because I was not home and close to medical that I'm used to. But I remember we were in a traffic jam in China. I don't know what city we were in. And um, I was getting sicker and sicker. And we're sitting in the back of this car that the factory had provided to take us to the next factory. And um, oh, I could feel my breathing just getting worse and worse and worse. And our uh, agent over there that assists us to get all the goodies back to Australia, he, um, he could see I was getting worse and worse. And I said to him, look, you're going to have to get me to a chemist. And do you know the product called Ventolin? 
And he's like, yes, yes, he said, our, our smog is so bad in our country that the Ventolin is very popular to sort of help us all deal with that. Anyway, um, we found a chemist and we had been sitting in this traffic for hours, slowly edging our way across this huge city to get from one factory to another. So we ended up hopping out of the car when we saw a chemist on the side of the road in this city and um, we raced in and Tony came in with us and um, he got us, got me some Ventolin. And oh, the instant relief when I could feel that Ventolin sort of going through my body and opening up my airways, it was just such a relief. But still, it turned out to be a pretty nasty flu. I think that was back in 2017 or 18, something like that. So I must say the COVID that I got, this new variant, this lesser variant, has been... Um, very manageable because it's only really lasted about 10 days and it's got less and less and less each day. It's really only just adjusting my voice because it's sort of just hanging around. So I must say I can handle it compared to what I've had in the past, but um, I know COVID's been pretty rough for a lot of people. So I feel very fortunate. But enough about me rambling on about the flu, I'm just pinning random things down. <clears throat> now, I did want to do some couching of some mushrooms. So I need to have a think about maybe some um, mushrooms up here. Just uh, some toadstools. Whether they are this big and stay in this shape, we will see. But I guess it's just to know that they're there. Like that to me is a little bit plain. I might sort of pick that up a little bit and make it a little bit more wonky like a toadstool. There'll be a couple come up the back there. That's pretty good. That will come down there. There'll be a stem come through there. Another stem there. Okay, I'm happy happy with that at the moment. I did want to move, put this in somewhere. Maybe having him come up the back here. That's a, quite a tall mushroom. And it can peek out the top of our piece that's not a problem and he'll need a stem that sort of brings him down and then maybe we can have another another couple toadstools because toadstools seem to be really tall And small, narrow little guys. They're going to be perfect, I think, for just popping up around the place. I'll do another one here. <clears throat> All right. A few little random things. And I'll probably be able to fit one in here. But I might see how these... Um, stems sort of go first before I get too carried away with toadstools. Now I've got a couple more crocheted mushrooms here. There's my phone ringing. Okay, I'm going to stop the video. <clears throat> I need to take this call, but you can sort of see where I'm heading with it. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Had to answer that call, so that's all sorted. All right, um, I'm pretty happy with that composition so far. So I've got a bit of couching that I will do. For those of you that don't know what couching is, that is just laying down the thread and stitching over it to um, hold it into position with either a similar color or a contrasting color, depending on what sort of feature you want to um, sort of achieve with your thread. So I'll just lay this one down 
for those who have never couched before. So you can just pop a few pins in to sort of get it into position. I tend to go over the thread. And then, oh yeah, I'm gonna like that. And this is the thread that came on a fabric bundle, I think from Rachel. Got a few fabric bundles from different people over the years and sort of lose track a little bit, but they sort of feel like that's something that Rachel would put together. Okay, so that's that little toad still. Oops, I've lost a... Didn't, didn't pin him down. The phone rang, so I didn't get back to him. <clears throat> There we go. One little toad still up in the top corner. I'm happy with that. This is going to be a lot of fun. That's the thing I love about when you do stitch reefs for nature. You've got a lot of flexibility because nature is a bit that way. So, especially the plant world, animals not so much as you can imagine. You sort of want to do a tiger, it needs to look like a tiger. So I don't usually do tigers, but butterflies are good. Birds are good. Okay, <clears throat> so that is pinned ready to couch into position. Once again, you can see the upside down heart. So that's a good start for shapes of uh, mushrooms. So he's pinned. This little guy wasn't. <clears throat> just to hold it okay all right <clears throat> I'm hoping that will become quite a, a chunky interesting textured sort of uh, stem like this one is over here sort of to balance up the page a bit not sure what these two will look like but we'll see that one there I'm not sure something will tuck in behind the mushroom might just have a fiddle with the shape of this mushroom see if we're happy with the look of him and we'll pin him down and I'm just gonna slip stitch this little fellow I was considering putting some wadding behind him, but I, I can't afford this to get too thick. Otherwise my journal, it'll just never close. So I'm going to try and refrain from making it too bulky. It's a bit hard because it's such a textured piece of embroidery, this one. But my theory is try and refrain I'm making it too chunky. Now being that that little toadstool is a lot smaller than those two over there, that might be a different thread I use to couch them down, just so they're a little bit finer. And then some of these little fellows might be able to poke up in around here, not on that boundary, because remember we need that to not give away what's hidden behind. I don't wanna see any of those mushrooms poking through. That one there may even need to move over a little bit, but that's all right. <clears throat> so I'm pretty happy with that. That's pinned, that's pinned. You can definitely have some little toadstools come up here. Maybe some will go over that stem. Some little ones so I'm just sketching in a few little things it'll just help fill the space that's sort of left but we do need to be careful that you know it's 
you can still make out that there is a scene. You don't want to make it too full, but you sort of you sort of can as well. The other thing I wanted to do while I've got the camera on is I wanted to start laying down the ground, the forest floor, and it's going to be a mishmash of fibers and threads and things. So the first thing I want to do is just get down some calico or muslin. <clears throat> And I'm sort of creasing it and making it all bumpy as I go, like it sticks and moss and gosh, this morning I was having my breakfast and I was thinking, oh, I could probably put some timber in it. I'm like, no, stop. That's getting it too thick, too textured. Tech, there we go. There's that word that I struggle with. Plus I thought I'll be putting timber in, I won't close the book. Timber probably won't be dry, then I'm going to have mould, then I'm going to have mushrooms. So we're going to just forget about that idea. So I'm just pinning this randomly. <clears throat> Squishing it as I go. And then what I'll do is before I get too carried away, I'm going to just start stitching and see how it comes together and then decide whether I need um, uh, something else in there, some fibres. Like I can even see all the little threads that came off of the crocheting. They're like just sitting there on the desk. I'm going to stitch them in too. Why not? Already heading to the bin. A few little fibers there. <clears throat> Gosh, and I haven't even started with the pearls and the sequins. Put a bit of glamour in. There we go. Ow, there's a lot of pins here. So there you go there. I've just put some started layering some um, different elements down. So the, the fabric and then these little fibers that come off the crocheting that I just snipped off. Um, what else have I got in my little tray here? I do have that still. So that might even appear, but I'm thinking that'll be up on mushrooms, but we'll see how we go. That's a lighter, the lighter fabric in the fabric we used. Spray that up a little bit. I want it to feel really luscious and textured. Te ah, there's that word. I gotta come up with a different word so that I don't have this stumbling block. There we go. I'll just pin that there. <clears throat> Needle and thread will help. Grabbing another pin. I seem to be really low on pins. I don't know where they've all gone. I know I bend a lot, so I took a photo for Instagram the other day. And when I looked at it, there's a pin right in the middle of the shot that's all bent. <laughs> Made me laugh. I thought that was quite funny. It's so typical. Okay, <clears throat> that's the start of it anyway. And then it'll be just a case of using just normal cotton. I'll um, pop a few little random stitches in there just to, you know, pin it all down and hold it. <clears throat> and then layer again, pin, uh, stitch it down, layer again, stitch it down. Sort of keep fiddling with it. And I think I'll get smaller and smaller with what I add to it, like um, some yarn and then the beads. I might even add a few buttons just to, you know, really thicken it up with some goodies down there that maybe help make mushrooms. Caught the 
should. So I'm just tacking it down. Mm, lost it. Okay. So happy with that so far. We've got the layout of the mushrooms. <clears throat> We've got the base or the, the land, the ground, the soil, the compost. The compost starting to happen and we've also got um, sketched in some toadstools that I'm going to couch in the background so they're like really background highlights they're not of any great substance and I can hear fudge meowing in the background so just stitching that now down. <clears throat> I'm really pleased with the way this is coming together. I haven't done fabric mushrooms to any degree before. And you see them pop up all the time around YouTube, just different interpretations of a mushroom. Or a toadstool. I love some of the 3D ones where they stuff them and either hang them on their Christmas tree or they put a little stick in the base of them so that they can sit them in a pot plant. <clears throat> they paint them and oh, they do all sorts of crazy things with them and they're just gorgeous. So it's probably where I started getting the idea. I think a couple popped up from Sunita. She's a textile artist, painter, junk journalist. Not sure where she's from, somewhere in Europe. She's got a very thick accent, but does speak English. But um, she made some 3D ones. Oh, stunning. And I was like, oh, mushrooms. What could I do with mushrooms? So I think that's sort of how it all started. <clears throat> when you have a bigger page spread like this, more of a landscape, it um, just gives you more scope to drift a theme across more of a lineal, lineal space. And I thought, being that we've got a flip on our cover, what a perfect way to, you know, fill it up. And now I've stitched that down just with some little invisible stitches. So I'm going to remove the pins because I've got limited pins it would seem and see if that's all going to hold so that's the background one there's another one another one that looks pretty secure that one looks secure there's one tucked in behind look I use like four or five pins just in that corner no wonder they disappear so quick there's another one <laughs> and another one that's holding. That nearly looks like a fungi. Look at that. You know those ones that grow on the side of a log and they've got that fan shape? I'm loving that. Actually, just had an idea. This one here, this half yo-yo, that is going to be a fungi. That's going to grow off of the floor of my forest. So I'm going to move it down. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit there by tucking more of it underneath because it's not going to be fully needed in all of its size and glory. <clears throat> and that is going to be a fungi growing on the floor in the foreground. Oh, my yo-yo is coming apart. Okay. Yeah. I'll just have to decide whether that little toad still there is in front or behind. I think he's behind. <clears throat> okay. Love, love that. Yes. So that now gives me more opportunity there to do something. 
and that sort of matches that. It's the same fabric too. Look at that. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so I've stitched along there. That's all secure. Yeah, loving that. Okay, I'll bring that up to the camera so you can sort of see. We've just got those fibres that came off the crocheting just sitting there. The little fungi fan and then just the layers of the first two fabrics I put down, which are uh, just crimped a little bit, squished up, and then we're on our way again. So that's all secure, and I think I took about 10 pins out of there, so that explains where all my pins are. So what I'll do now is I'm going to stop the video. Um, no, I won't. I'm going to couch down this mushroom up here. I have a lot of people ask me about couching. Can you please show? So while we've got it pinned and it's looking like I like it, I'm going to <clears throat> couch it down. And I'm going to actually just use normal cotton in the cream because I don't really want to contrast colour up there. If I decide later that I did want something in there just to give it a pop of colour, because I've used just a normal uh, cream cotton, I can still come back through with a highlight colour and, um, you know, add it. So for those of you who don't know how to couch, it is just a case of needle and thread over the thread that you're wanting to stitch down with a series of little stitches. Jumping over it and then coming up back up from behind and then back down in the center can you see that and that is now held down couching as a stitch is fantastic for writing words with it allows you to get <clears throat> a curved shape on your stitcheries so if you want to write something have a look at couching a thread down to become your letters. I think you'll be quite impressed with the way that um, you can achieve a nice curve. I know it's really hard to stitch, say, a letter A or a letter O and make it look like those letters because it gets very uh, angled due to your stitch. And unless you do tiny, tiny stitches like petty point stitches, itty bitty miniature stitches, and even then, the needle and the thread leave a hole as they come up and down through the fabric. So you still can see sort of how it's um, stitched. <clears throat> stitched. So if you want a more fluid, i stop for a moment because I was trying to work out where I was on my mushroom cap. So if you want a fluid look to your writing, your script, I'd highly recommend couching. Okay, so I'm coming around the top of the mushroom. How simple. Plus I like how this is sort of going to blend with the background. So they're sort of there, but they're not. So that's, that's what I love about slow stitching these panels, these blocks, is the more you look, the more you see. I know if someone pops over for a visit and they're like, what are you up to at the moment? And I show them the stitcheries. And you just sit down and you watch them flip through the book or the journal. And then they'll go back through again and have another look and they'll see even more things. And it, it's like the more you look, the more you see. And I love that about this stitchery because that then allows us as the creators to have a look at space within the block and go well, all right so I've got the basics down what else can I add and that's where the seed stitches come in and the, the pearls and the beads and just random mark making with stitching you can even bring paints into it like it's just a fantastic way of expressing a, a scene and creating something very interesting to look at so I'm coming back down around the bottom of this little guy so as for those other pieces they'll just be stitched down I don't think there'll be anything fancy happen with them 
um, until we get to the embellishing side of it. And I believe that'll be part three. I don't want to rush it. I want to make sure I get all these background elements into position without sort of jumping straight to the fun pretty bit. So I don't want to take my time and make sure I get it exactly where I want it. Now come to the end of the thread <clears throat> that I'm couching down. And being that it's a rope, I just have to thread my needle again. I've left a little extra there. So what I need to do is just put a few extra stitches there to hold that end down. Now I did start and finish at the base of the cap where the stem would be. So that will hide also the fact that this thread has finished there. I'm going to take out those pins around that region. And I'm going to just trim that a little bit. And then put some more stitches in there. Now I've run out of thread. It's a bit short. So I'm actually going to finish it off on the back. And re-thread and just do a little bit more stitching in there because I don't want that to come loose. <clears throat> Oops. Okay, where's my cotton? Okay, re-threaded, a little extra. And now I just want to, I can get rid of that. Just want to pinch that, the beginning of the twine, uh, the twine, where it first started and add a few extra. stitches. Okay, that's better. And by the time I sort of add a stem, like I said, that'll disguise, I'd say, the where the twine started and finished, or the cordage. Okay, love it. That feels quite good now. That's not going to come apart. I'll just do another stitch just in case. So you don't want it unraveling. All right. I'll secure that off with a little knot behind. Okay. Let's have a little look at what we've got. We have one mushroom cap couched into the top there. We'll worry about the stem at another time. So I might think of something that could be used for the stem. And we've got opportunity to even do another one at the very top, but we'll see how we go. Okay, I'm going to leave the video at that and stitch everything down and then work on the basic bottom to make sure that that's all in position. I won't do any embellishing like the beads and the French knots and all of those extra things. I will just get it all stitched down so then, you know, I can go to the next stage, which looking at how much time I've spent just on that will be part three. Okay, no problems. I will leave you and I will be back in a moment and show you everything stitched down. See you soon. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I'll just bring you up to speed on what I've done so far. I've stitched down all the key elements that I had shown you previously, um, whether it be just slip stitch or just some stab stitch, some invisible stitch, but everything is now secure. In that process, I added a little ruffle to the edge of this particular mushroom cap where I just uh, tore the fabric gathered it up with a needle and thread and then just tacked it down on that edge. 
I left it plain on this corner because I think I'm going to have something dangling off of it, like dew drops or something like that. Anyway, who knows? I can always re-ruffle that up if I decide not to do anything. I finished all the couching down of the different mushroom caps and the thread actually became quite valuable because it um, started to unravel. So in some of them I used two, some of them like the very first one that is the whole thread. Then the next one next to it is just two. Then I started getting down to one, which is that one up there. So it was fantastic because it gave me a, um, a different variety of thicknesses for my little mushroom caps. So I had a little play with that. I even used down for this one, some of the crochet cotton that was left that I trimmed off of the crocheted mushrooms. The tassels that I created here, <clears throat> all I did was fold a piece of this in half um, and snip it off. And before I couch the whole cap, I just started in that one corner there, laid it down, needle and thread, and stitched it down. And then I kept going until I'd done the whole bottom of the little mushroom cap, and then did the rope around the top of the cap. So I just created a different sort of finish on the bottom. Um, where I can, I'm sort of trying to do different techniques on each mushroom so that one there sort of created like a little fringe it um I, yeah really pretty i like it i'm yet to do the stems on the um couched ones because i think that's going to be a combination of ribbons laces and beadwork so we'll stay tuned on that still thinking about it what else did i do everything yeah is secure i didn't cut the doily i just folded it under and then i just pulled the excess doily into the baseline. So what that helped do is create quite a chunky um, finish to the bottom of the mushroom. So it's quite raised because it's all squished up in there and then I just put a heap of stitches through. And then at the top here, it's still open like you would see it if it was sitting on a, a table or a, a duchess, you can sort of see through to the background. I didn't stitch it all the way down everywhere. I left it quite flippy floppy so I thought I liked that um, what else did I do on the, along the bottom I just started working again like I did over here laying bits and pieces down um, I ended up putting that whole piece of napkin that I got um, the edge off of this thing here and it's sort of really nice because it's been starched and being used and now um, all of those little fibers are quite rigid which I really like. It sort of feels quite um, rough. So I think I'll be using a little bit more of that. Uh, that went down and then I just started laying on top of it some of the other pieces of fabric, gathering them as I went. Now, these little pieces here, that's just a, a little small piece of the fabric folded in half to create like a little V and then stitched down just to create some little upward upward shapes in my um, fabrics. Now, I don't know if you can see underneath that particular crocheted mushroom is this little fibery bit and there's another piece here. All I did there is, um, if you remember, there was a piece of lace that I was squinching around and stitched the top of it. I cut that in um, half, here it is on a roll actually, that there, all I did was I cut it in half and then started fraying that because it's like a crocheted lace. And then that little bit of um, fibrous went into my piece like so. And I'll actually probably stitch that there. Okay, I will leave the video there because I, I believe this will be getting quite long now. So, and I'll come back with the next one where I start sort of just keep building and building on the actual uh, collage itself. So that's at least a start. Okay, everyone, I will see you soon in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button or the little bell because then you'll know when the next mushroom video will be up and ready to be viewed. Okay, see you soon. Bye.